Hi there, my name is Kay Moon and I'm a twin flame channel and Western astrologer. And this is a video about the full moon in Leo taking place on February 5th of 2023 at 1.27 p.m. If you happen to be on the Eastern seaboard of the United States, if not, please check a time zone converter for your local time. Have a look here, my friends. Here's our full moon in Leo right there opposite the sun that's what makes it a full moon and what a fun full moon it is there's still a lot of amazing energy unfolding at this time lots of love energy lots of deepening energy lots of energy of getting to know ourselves and others better and getting the opportunity to create new ways forward and new pathways. As usual, I will be doing first look at the very end of this video. So stay tuned if you'd like to get an update on the next new moon that we will all have together. Um, maybe that might be the new moon in Aquarius. I don't know. We're going to find out. I'm going to pull it up at the very end of this video. So if you want to know where the energy goes and flows after this full moon in Leo, stick around till the end. It'll be here before you know it. Also, if you're looking to get a handle on the energy of this year, certainly the first part of the year has a very particular vibe with a lot of momentum. The second part of the year it's packing some punches, I've noticed as I've looked at it for people. So if you want to get a heads up on what this year may look like for you, then all you have to do is book in my calendar. I've got some sessions available that first week of March, which is still quite early enough before all of this new energy fully anchors for us to have a look at what it'll mean for you and where your year is headed. Okay. Super excited to chat with you. Calendar is open over at kmonastro.com. Now what's most notable about this particular lunation, let me find it. Okay. Here we are. Is that here we have the moon at 16 degrees Leo. And anytime we have a full moon, it's always moon opposite sun, but we have a T square going on here with from Uranus and Uranus is the hand of the divine, the divine change maker, the energy of divine intervention, interruption, divine change in the shadow. It's straight up chaos, but in the light, it's evolution and quantum leaps and aha moments and a movement into significant transformation that can seem to happen nearly overnight. With this energy, there's an impetus to change, to grow, to quantum leap and transform. And this energy has been underway for some time. It's not new. If you've been around with me for a little while, you know we've talked about the energy of Saturn squaring Uranus all last year and the way that that provided a push, a pull, a poke, a prod to please change something in your life now in at least one area. The theme around this continues with Uranus squaring this particular full moon. Okay. So the interesting thing about this is that we've all felt the call with the momentum of the Saturn, the six Saturn Uranus squares and now that call is being activated by a tug of war between our identity, that's the sun, who we believe ourselves to be, what we take pride in about ourselves, and our emotions. It's a bit of a tug of war between our ego, that could be the sun, and our needs. And in the shadow, with both of these being fixed signs and a uh, Taurus being a fixed sign, this is a bit of a tug of war around um, our attachments, really, and where it is we feel like we need to grow and go. And so this is an opportunity for a step up. It's an opportunity for a breakthrough. In order to get it in this energy, 
we have to face the tension of the T-square. T-square is always signal tension and find it within us to create the new ways forward, the new pathways. The way to access it whenever we have a T-square is to pull in the fourth of the fixed signs. So there are three, there are four total fixed signs. Three of them are occupied by a planetary energy. We've got Aquarius being occupied by the sun, We've got Uranus being occupied or Taurus being occupied by Uranus, We've got the moon here occupying Leo. The final fixed sign of the four is Scorpio and it is unoccupied at these degrees unless we as divine creators incarnate, choose to occupy this energy to bring balance to the situation. And so in order to get the benefit and the balance of this tense kind of sensation of feeling pulled in different directions, we will need to confront scorpionic issues. These could be issues of sexuality or reproductive health, other people's money, dealing with debt, inheritances, taxes, lottery winnings, loans, credit cards, etc. But it could also be about change and transformation and recognizing what we need to put to an end, what we need to put to death, what we need to submit, put it on the altar for transformation. There could be a recognition recognition of behaviors that need our transformation when it comes to other people in money, other people in sex or personal, our own personal transformation process. Um, We could, for many, you know, I have noticed my fixed signs are some of the most hard on themselves. If you've got one of those four sign placements prominent in your chart, it could, it could be the kind of thing where there's a beating ourselves up in order to change, this would be the opportunity to stop doing that and just make the changes at the pace at which you can move. Or this could be a stubbornly clinging to our shadow when it comes to change and proclaiming that that's just the way I am. That would be the shadow use of this energy. And that would be a guarantee of repeating the cycle. The truth is you are more than your shadow. You always have been and will be. And this is a wonderful opportunity to do the opposite of what your instinct might be. If your instincts have consistently had you playing small and then having regret. This is ultimately about learning and knowing how to change on command, uh, because our spirit showed us we need to, instead of just learning how to change upon consequence and waiting for consequences to be dealt to us before we shift things. Now, because this call for growth and transformation and evolution, it's been with us for some time. And now we're moving into a season of deeper refinement with it. Where last year, as we led up into this energy, it felt like there was probably like back against the wall, the universe's, you know, arm on our neck, yelling in our face like a drill sergeant, you must change. This is more of an energy of a test. Have you changed? Will you change? Because it's quick. It's This isn't a repetitive energy like we got with the Saturn Uranus squares. This is a passing energy where very quickly it's going to ramp up some tension to say, hey, did you get the memo from last year? Cool, because the meeting is taking place over here. Either you're meeting us there or you're going to move on in a different direction. Okay. The question that we'll be wrestling with over the course of this lunation is what in our ego, that's the sun, Our ego structure or our identity is stopping us from becoming the evolved, that's Uranus, version of ourself, that's Taurus, the self that we really value in our heart of hearts. What attachments, that's the shadow side of the moon in Leo, do we have in our emotions? That's the moon. What attachments do we have in our emotions? or in our emotional identity 
that might be stopping us or holding us back, holding us in place, right? Do we have a need to be right or to be seen as the kind one or a need to be seen as the generous one? Do we have a need to have the answers or a need to not need other people to be completely independent? Do we have a need to be seen as the spiritual evolved ones? Do we have a need to be seen as a leader? Do we have a need to be the reliable one? Much of what's going to come up for examination revolves around how we want other people to see us. And underneath that, and more importantly, why? Why do we want other people to see us that way? Why are we invested in having that identity? The three occupied signs, Aquarius, Leo, and Taurus. So just to give you those again here on screen, here's Aquarius. Here's Leo where the moon is. And here's Taurus, the three signs that are occupied by a planetary placement have to do with our ability to be who we are, as we are, authentically with others. But what this lunation reveals is where we are in conflict with ourselves when it comes to being connected to others and a bit of our own insanity when it comes to that definition of insanity, right? I'm sure you guys have heard the old adage, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing and then expecting a different result, right? We're going to be able to see this about ourselves at this time so we can go, aha, and this, and then do the scorpion thing, which is to change it, to transform it, to transmute it, to let it move through a cycle of death, integration, and then rebirth. So there will be something in the world of your own relationship to yourself and the way you are with other people and the identity investments you have in your ego structure that will come up for examination and transformation. Further assisting us with the motivation to change theme going on here is Venus square Mars. So here's Venus. Here she is in green in Pisces. And here's Mars in red and Gemini. They're sitting at a 90 degree angle. Okay. Venus is conjunct Nessus here. They're sitting together. And Mars is being highly influenced at the moment by Chiron in a sextile. Mars is having a conversation. Chiron is influencing that Mars. Okay. And then Uranus is further, not just having a conversation with the sun and the moon, but it's also having a sextiling conversation with that Venus Nessus conjunction. The most influential of this configuration is going to be the Chiron and the Uranus. Chiron or Uranus, again, being that hand of the divine, divine change, divine intervention, lightning quick movement toward evolution. The movement of Uranus is always toward our higher self, even if it comes through cataclysm. And then Chiron here which can manifest either in woundedness or in wisdom, depending upon our relationship to the wound, right? We can either leverage it for leadership or we can wallow in it and continue to view ourselves as victims of traumas, even though many of us have gone through and thrived through very traumatic events. That's not our identity. That's not who we are. And so Chiron and Uranus in the mix with this Venus and Mars, even though Venus and Mars typically on their own really speak a lot about passion and sensuality and sexuality and attraction and chemistry, what we have because Chiron and Uranus are so deeply embedded in the conversation with both of them is what we have is the chemistry and the groundwork for change, the motivation and the passion to transform and to grow. Okay. And we have a little bit of a rumination with the Nessus influence 
the Nessian influence represents that OCD, that kind of, I'm obsessed, I have to figure it out, I can't stop thinking about it kind of energy. And these can really play out in places where we think what that traditionally Venus and Mars govern. So we're talking about money and love. We're talking about motivation and our ambitions, things we'd like to accomplish here in life. There's going to be urge here, the urge to be free, free from who we used to be, free from what previously bound us, free from you know, what had had us kind of tied up in knots before, there's a real urge here to just once and for all, like, you know, shift, change the conversation, shift things, shake things up. There's a free to, uh, sorry, a desire to not be tied down, not be controlled by the old way, old things. And it's just good to know ahead that these old ways and things aren't going to go down without a fight, just so you're clear. The old ways never die without a fight. That's all right. Just remember that the divine purpose of the inner conflict at this time is so that we can see it, catch it, and change it this time so that we're more dialed in and aligned with who we're becoming okay so this energy is an influential energy certainly for this lunation but it's part of a larger spectrum of conversations that we're having this year about moving into the expression of our higher selves here in the third dimension closing the gap between our humanity and our divinity this is part of that so if you want to have a look at how that is going to play out for you this year, the best thing to do is book some time in my calendar because we're still in this period of time where we have the opportunity to not repeat a cycle. We have this opportunity to quantum leap onto a new timeline. And that window for making the new choices, going in the new direction, not repeating things, that window is open through about the end of March beginning mid of April. So if you're still in contemplation, and this is a conversation we've been having here on this channel for a few months now, there's this timeline leap, doors are open. It's an opportunity to graduate from high school, go to university, and through the process of that graduation, it's a little bittersweet. There are some things that we need to leave behind in order to get to the next step, the next level. And so many will be feeling this energy through this lunation of detoxification, purging. I mean, even myself, like I went through this moment this week where I was like, oh my God, I have to clean out all my closets, <laughs> which is something I do when I had like, I have a nervous tick around things. Like I don't need to like clean, clean stuff, like scrub it. I just feel the need to like detox stuff, like get lighter, get rid of stuff. And so I felt that urge come on this week. And I was like, what is going on here? And then I looked at the astrology and rethought about all my client sessions. And I was like, oh, it's a divine detox kind of illumination. That's what's going on here got it. And so all of that to say the getting lighter that we're all called to do is a direct function of the recognition. That we just can't go into the new while holding on to the old. We have to let go of the hand of old things. We've got to put to rest things that have been holding us back. And so we're still under the influence here of the Jupiter-Juno connection. Here it is. The divine counterparts only meet up in the sky once every seven-ish years. So Jupiter and his wife, Juno, when they come together, it's a really big deal because we don't see them together often. And when they come together, they demarcate kind of a seven-year season in our love relationships here on earth. Even researchers have seen this, I actually heard about a study over the weekend where 
psychological researchers had noticed in private practice that the two times that relationships seem to fall apart the most, if they're going to come apart, is at year seven and then again at year 12. So, and both of those are demarcated astrologically by Jupiter's movement through the 12 signs. Jupiter takes about a year per sign. And then Juno's meets with Jupiter, which happen roughly every seven-ish years, give or take. So the movement of these divine counterparts really plays a significant role in the way we all experience love energy here on Earth. And so the two of these meeting up for the first time together since 2015 connotes that there's a new love story beginning to unfold, a new season and a cycle in love for all of us. Both are speaking harmoniously to this full moon. There's the full moon right here <clears throat> from fire sign Aries, mid degrees. They're speaking to fire sign Leo where the moon sits in mid degrees. And they're laying to rest the last cycle. They met up in Leo at roughly the exact same degrees of this full moon in 2015. So we're essentially, because full moons close cycles, new moons open them. And now we have the divine counterparts blessing the ending of the cycle that we've all been in since 2015. That's coming to a close. And now we're moving into a new cycle, which is more self-honoring. It's far more authentic. It's far more focused on identity. Who are we? Who are we not? What are we identifying with? Who are we identifying with, right? You know that phrase, you're the, you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with as both of these counterparts start to call up the energy around identity and who we are and who we're not, there's going to be some shifting of the tectonic plates here. And certainly at this full moon in Leo, we're getting the like, Hey, just making sure you got the memo. We're all evolving. We're all moving on here, right? Just making sure that you know that it's time to leave certain things behind and let them go. Just making sure you got that right cool because we're going to very rapidly cycle through this and move into the next energy. Like I said, at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about what the next energy will be in the first look component. Okay. <clears throat> Note that both counterparts here are speaking to Chiron. Chiron's at the 12th degree of Aries. Juno's at the 11th degree. Jupiter's at the sixth degree. And again, Chiron represents that light and shadow around are we walking in woundedness or walking in wisdom okay and there's because it's conjunct and speaking in trine which is harmony we get more of the light than the shadow as an opportunity to work with here and the light is letting us know the wound is the way meaning precisely the place where we think we're not enough because Chiron and Aries, that's the conversation it has. It has a conversation of insufficiency, not enoughness. Something is wrong with meanness. The place where we think that's true about us through our vulnerability, we can come into true union with ourselves and with another. We just need to own and claim where we feel like we're not being ourselves and honor it. Hey, I may not be where I want to be, but I'm definitely not going to hide or apologize or change me anymore. I'm going to grow from where I'm at. I may not be perfect, but I'm present and I'm going to show up for me. So I had a reading <clears throat> earlier this week with a client, um, who was a great example of this as we are kicking off this energy. Um, as a young woman, we'll just call her Jane. And we'll say, you know, Jane grew up in a super competitive way and it was all over her chart. 
extraordinarily ambitious, super focused and driven. She played three sports at a, three sports in the year. Twice a year, the sports overlap. So she was in practices for two different sports, you know, every single day for a couple of months in the cycle of the year. You know, she's grown up. She's got a family now. And she's in leadership in a family business at this point. And she's been promoted, not because she's, you know, the boss's kid, but because she's actually really good at what she does. She's very effective at, you know, the ins and outs of the business, the strategy, et cetera, of making sure that the business continues to grow. And she's in a leadership position with people much older than her, reporting into her and people who have had more seniority around her watching her come up through the ranks so quickly. And so she had recently gone to a training and at that for people in the industry and at that training, you know, she stood up and then at the tail end of the class about a homework assignment and said, you know, I don't agree with this assignment and here's why. I'm curious if we can shift it this way, that way, and the other way. And it was just logic to her. She was just being authentically herself. And in response, another one of her classmates publicly shamed her for speaking out about being young and disrespectful, et cetera, um, and being self-righteous and entitled. And in that moment, you know, that could have really been a moment of shrinking for Jane, but it wasn't. Instead of shrinking, you know, Jane took the opportunity to reflect and really sit with it. Like what in this could be true and what in this is, you know, the, was there definitely something in Jane that wanted to be oppositional, that wanted to like bury this person, that wanted to retaliate? Yes, that was all there, but Jane just went silent because she knew if I respond to this publicly, I'm just going to damage relationships in this moment. So what she did was she took the opportunity to reflect and she said, you know what? Okay, I get it. I see the thing I need to shift because I've got the strategic components down. I'm masterful at running this business. I'm extraordinarily gifted at being able to ensure that everything that the business needs continues to unfold, but I've got to figure out how to be more masterful with people. I've got to figure out how to enroll people, excite and motivate people, how to lead in a way that has people not want to push against me, but actually want to follow me. And that was a light bulb aha moment. And what Jane realized in that moment is that I've got to figure out how to take that competitive side of me that wants to be the best in every circumstance and really channel that instead of just being the best and beating everyone in this classroom, I need to figure out how to be the best person or version of myself that I can be to really change, shift, transform, and motivate the people around me. And this was part of a string of events where there was pushback from people inside of her organization that created problems for her um, that had nothing to do with the strategy parts of the job, but the interpersonal relationship parts of the job. And so it was, this is that kind of moment where something could happen. So, an event can be presented to you and you can either in this moment shrink and agree with your limitations. Well, I'm just a competitive person and I'll just always be this way. Or you can do the scorpionic thing and say, you know what? I see this thing about myself. It is not working. There's a pattern here and I'm ready to shift, transform, change, transmute it, right? And so for all of us, that's going to appear in at least one area of life. The house where Scorpio sits is most likely the place where that's going to show up for you. 
either. And so pay attention, especially if you're one of my star schoolers, we talked about houses and class two of 101 and, or I think it was actually class three of 101 and looking at the houses of your chart and understanding, okay, this is the house where shift growth and transformation has to happen. Like I can't keep doing stuff the old way. This is just not working for me. By choosing, I'm ready to evolve here. You're going to get the benefit of this Leo full moon and this Uranus, which is trying to catalyze us into our quantum leap and next step. Okay. There's a real need to step into some self-acceptance and compassion with this energy. Self-approval energy is also necessary and not settling for our previous limitations or arguing to stay in those limitations, but instead embracing them as our starting point for moving into more light. Okay. So there's a lot of opportunity here for all of us or big light bulb and then a big step forward. Jupiter here is also opposing series. And I'd be curious if you had like a light bulb this week. I know I have, and, you know, just watching the patterns unfold and paying attention to my life and seeing what's happening in my clients' worlds. There's definitely a pattern that emerged in the house that Scorpio governs in my own chart <clears throat> where it's very nice. I'm clear. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have to shift this if I want to proceed in any capacity or grow in any capacity. So if you got that light bulb this week, like Jane did, like I did, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Now we have Jupiter opposing series here. Here is series and Libra. Ceres is trining Pluto here in Capricorn. This is an energy that's been in effect for a little while now. <clears throat> now, Pluto governs resurrection cycles. So death after life and then rebirth. And Ceres governs seasonality to things. The process of moving from spring to summer, summer to fall, fall to winter, etc. With the two of these in harmony together, while this rebirth energy and divine detox energy is going on, there's definitely <clears throat> an overlap here of one cycle coming to a close and another cycle opening. Jupiter is also sextile Pluto. And so sextiles, the cycle's closing on its own. That's the trine energy. We don't have to do anything for the cycle to close and the cycle to open. But if we want to move an evolution in the cycle, we do need to apply our effort, our faith, our optimism. That's Jupiter in Aries to new activities and behavior. That's Aries to ensure that we are moving in a higher level direction instead of just in the old direction. Okay. Because the cycle is definitely, it's, it's closing either way, like graduation season is here. <laughs> it's fine if you want to hang in the grade that you've been in because you're not ready to let go. But either way, the people in the current grade, they're all moving on. Okay. We also have Mercury conjunct Pluto. Let's highlight that. Here's Pluto. Here's Mercury consciousness. Again, Pluto is that energy of the Phoenix, the resurrection cycle. We've got a sextile here to Neptune, bringing some spirituality to this. There's a lot clearer communication with effort here. Sextiles bring benefit, but they need to have our own effort behind it in order to get the benefit. There's a sense of all parts striving to see the higher level of things with some focus, with some effort, all parts of us recognizing, okay, what's the lesson here? What am I not seeing and needing to dig deep into that? Okay. 
So there's some other energies here, certainly with, you know, Lilith and Pallas and Bolus. But what I'm noticing when I sat down to map those out <clears throat> was that they echoed the main story. And so rather than bringing them in to repeat the main story and main theme, I figured we can tighten this video up, move on to first look earlier, and give ourselves the opportunity to get on with what our own divine detox is. So if you want to get see how this kind of breaks down for you, this check and double check as we move into the next lunation, by all means, feel free to book with me over at kmoonastro.com. Let's get into first look now. I'm going to pull up the next uh, lunation, which is a couple weeks out, and talk to you guys about my initial reactions to that. So just give me a minute. Okay. So the next lunation is the new moon in Pisces. I misspoke at the start of this video. And that's going to take place on February 20th, 2023 at 2.05 a.m. If you happen to be on the eastern seaboard of the United States. And there is our new moon heading into the final season, <clears throat> lunar season of the Zodiac before we start the cycle all over again with new moon and Aries. So as the first sign of the Zodiac, here's the new moon in Pisces. Let's just see who that new moon is speaking to. We have a direct conjunction with Saturn, which is about boundaries. It's about focus and discipline. It's also about integrity and wholeness of things. New Moon is also going to have a conversation. Let's see with whom else. Hmm. Wow. Okay. She's, except for some of the minor aspects, she's relatively unaspected. Yep. Let me just double check that. I'm going to check my aspect grid. Yeah, she's conjunct Saturn, trying, trying Pallas and the creation goddess, but that is it. Otherwise, here's Pallas. Here's the creation goddess. But you can see even Pallas is 10 degrees off. And creation goddess is certainly at the same degree. You could say she's trying the south node. Hmm. That's interesting. <clears throat> Let me see what the other features are here. I like seeing Venus and Jupiter together. I like seeing um okay. But Venus is also hanging out with Neptune, which if you're subscribed to this channel, you know I don't love. And Pluto is also influencing that configuration via a sextile with Venus. Interesting. Yeah. So <clears throat> with the sun and the moon speaking to the south node and the creation goddess here, there's still a little bit of a like, and Pluto so heavily in the mix with Venus here. There's, there's an interesting energy of like, Lay is there another interpretation to this? I don't want to speak. Okay, well, I, I don't know. I would have to sit with it longer, which is normally what I do when I prep for a lunar update. But the quick thing that I'm seeing here is that there's a demand for us to get into spiritual alignment, spiritual integrity. <clears throat> Pisces is the sign that represents not just artists of any and all forms, but also our connection to spirit, our connection to um, 
the all things that is no one, no thing in particular. It's the unnameable and the ineffable. That's Piscean energy. And we've got Pisces sun moon connecting here to Saturn, which is still in Aquarius and Aquarius represents the collective while Pisces is the collective subconscious. Aquarius is the collective consciousness. It's the things that we all are thinking at the same time. Saturn <clears throat> demands integrity about anything that it deals with. It demands wholeness. And I'll get into the mythology when I do the lunar update for the new moon in Pisces and why that is. But what we're dealing with when Saturn is so heavily featured in a lunar update is the vibration and frequency of needing to cut off anything that undermines our capacity to do what the new moon demands, which is in this case, move into our spiritual connection with ourself, our higher self, our higher power and release because we've got sun moon connecting to the south node and creation got us here release any of our previous manifestations of self that have undermined our ability to stand in our spiritual wholeness and spiritual integrity the vibration and frequency there is one of letting go because it's the right thing to do this isn't a fall on your sword, sacrificial lamb, martyr myself for the glory kind of energy. Instead, this is an energy of recognizing which things have run its course, which things where, where there's no, there's not even marrow in the bone. Certainly meat's been gone a long time ago. So where we're not just beating the dead horse, trying to get it back to life, but dragging it around, there's this recognition of like, okay, I, I yield, I let go. That is a former creation of myself or here in life and trying to hold on and resuscitate it is only causing me to lose myself. And so there's a recognition of, okay. I yield, I release, I let go because there's so much energy populating here in the new. We have a <clears throat> planetary stack moving into the new and the first sign of the zodiac Aries that's only going to be amplified in the weeks after this new moon in Pisces that takes place on February 20th. And so we've got Venus that's going to jump into Pisces or sorry, into Aries right after this new moon, the sun, the moon is very quickly going to move into Aries right after this new moon, the sun will eventually join. And so we've got this vibration, this frequency of an overlap, just as the old is closing out, the new is coming online. And there's this recognition of, of the embrace of the new, but you know, in order to it's funny because that story I was telling earlier about Jane, about how Jane participated in two, three sports all year long, back to back with two overlaps in the season. There's this short period of overlap, which is what we are in right now, where there's a lot of new, it's a lot of momentum around newness. For some of you, this is new people. For others of you, this is new job, new projects, new friends, you know, new communities, new home. But just as you are stepping into the new, there's a need to kind of release the old. The old is slowly winding down. And this new moon in Pisces represents a very somber type of closing out while the new is ramping up and getting underway. Again, this doesn't read like sacrificial lamb, you know, heroic martyr. Oh, the right thing for me to do is just bow out. No, it's not that. It's an energy of just really recognizing, okay, look, I have not, clean, speaking of cleaning out my closets, I've not worn this thing in three years. I have not touched that book in 10 years. It is time to let it go. It is time to release it so that there is room in my home for new things. There's room for other stuff, right? So don't let your ego get involved here around 
what you're releasing, especially when it comes to people. Cause I'm not seeing this as a releasing people kind of thing. Well, I was no good for you. And therefore I have to let you go. And it, don't get involved in the Hollywood drama of this. This is just a straight up, you know what? We're done here. We're moving into that. It, again, it's the energy of graduation. It's the energy of promotion. But in order to get to the new desk, you're going to have to clean out the old desk and move to the new building and the new section to get your promotion. It's that kind of vibe. <clears throat> you might have to turn in your old ID and get a new ID so that you can continue to work in the elevated position that your life is now taking on. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you want to have a look at that and how that all is going to unfold and where the rest of your year is going, then by all means, book with me over at kmoonastro.com. And otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Definitely let me know in the comments if you're seeing some aha moments at this current lunar update. I'd be curious to know which aha moments are coming online for you. Thanks for the likes. If you're new here, welcome. Subscribe. I'm here at the new and full moon and we can unpack the stars together. Take care. Bye for now.